Hi friends, it's Kate and I am here with a trio of abstract watercolor paintings with doodles. So I wanted to do a watercolor and I thought that doing three might be pretty nice just to play around with different colors. Uh, well, really different, <laughs> different um, compositions of the same colors really. And then doing some different doodles on them with my uh, pens and markers that I have. So. I had a ton of fun doing this and uh, the final video for this is actually almost an hour so I thought it would be nice for us to just relax together and put some paint on paper and hopefully you can paint along with me but if not I hope you enjoy this video today. As much as I enjoyed doing it that's for sure. <laughs> So I'm going in with the yellow green first and that uh, is from the Mei Liang palette and I really um, like how bright it is and I'm going to pair it with Payne's Gray later on and I believe the olive green. But one of the reasons why I decided to do three was I really wanted to start working and getting some practice with mark making and doodles in general. You know, there's been a few videos that I've made lately where I've tried to do some different things, but I think when you're doing one piece at a time, it's almost like you're afraid of making a mistake or doing something wrong because then that piece is just gone <laughs> or you know it's just I, I I would hesitate to say that anything is ever ruined because honestly you can just paint right over it um, or do something else but you know for what you're trying to accomplish sometimes you know it's just not turning out the way you want it to so I thought that if I got three pieces and painted them all at the same time and then doodled on them all at the same time, I'd be a lot less precious with my mark making. And I really think it worked out really, really nicely, actually. Um, I liked all of the ones I made. They were all a little bit different and they were all a lot of fun. And I am going in with the different colors and just putting them in different areas that just feel right on the paper. I'm not really concentrating on where colors are going. Um, and I just sort of work intuitively here. And so I'm dipping into that olive green to tone down that yellow green just a little bit. And then for my dark values, I'm going to go in with the Payne's Gray here shortly. And I'm working on all three at the same time. Um, I had sprayed the back of my paper just to help prevent a little bit of the buckling. But I don't have a lot of problem with buckling with this paper anyway. But it is sort of like extra insurance. And so I really like how the Payne's Gray looks with the green colors and I, this color combination was really attractive to me and I'm glad I used it for this. And so I'm working on my glass palette off to the side, that way you can see me mixing color and I've got my jar of clean water up above. So some of the paint areas are starting to dry just a little bit and I'm going over them again. Um, I don't really mind if there's a little bit of texture or cauliflowering. Um, that just sort of adds interest for me, so it's not a problem. But you'll want to make sure you're working on wet color if you want to avoid that and not go over the same colors too much.
Working with this quill brush has been really relaxing too. It holds a lot of water and pigment. It really is just like a giant mop, but the nice thing about it is it can get to a really fine point if you want it to. So I'm going back in with that yellow green again just to get some nice bright areas. And I'm going in with the straight paint this time to get that full strength pigment. And just brightening it back up a bit. And I'll also go in a bit with the Payne's Gray to darken up some of the darker areas again too. And then we'll let that dry. But going back to the practice with mark making, one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel was to document my journey, basically, <laughs> with learning art. I know I've kind of mentioned in some early videos, maybe, that um, I had first picked up you know, paints and, <laughs> and different things. I had a very basic set of watercolors about, oh, six years ago now. And I had started to do a few little things, but it was very sporadic. And something I learned is that if you don't really make time and have a purpose to do something, it's easy to put it off and put it off. And so I never really made any progress, even if I did it a few times and enjoyed it. I never made a point to keep doing it and to use my supplies and just make some time for me to sit down and work on some painting or drawing or whatever the case was. And so part of this YouTube channel for me is to do all of those things and be able to also document my progress, you know, as I learn. And I think for this video in particular, I definitely hit a, a new point, I think. And part of it, I really do believe, comes from just making more than one piece. <laughs> and it seems so simple and maybe intuitive, I guess, but I I just didn't have to care as much about possibly ruining it or having it not turn out the way I wanted. And I just sat down with the idea as, you know, this is just for fun. I'm going to do this. It doesn't have to be precious. It doesn't have to be perfect because if I do something that I don't really care for, I have two other sheets right next to me. And I can make as many other sheets as I want to after that. So, you know, the practice part is really the important part. And I ended up really enjoying the marks that I made, um, probably more than most other videos, just because I didn't worry about it as much, if that makes sense. I wasn't, you know over worried about where I was going to make the next mark and possibly have it just ruined. <laughs> so it was sort of a freeing experience and I actually got to experiment a little bit. Now I'm going to have another video coming up and I did actually two trios. So this one I did the green and Payne's gray, but I also did another one with purples, and I really liked that one too. Unfortunately, <laughs> when I post the video, it's just going to have the doodles because I meant to hit record on the watercolor portion, and um, I guess I must have forgot because I didn't have it in any of my footage when I was doing post-processing. So I apologize for that, but I did want to still post the doodles even without the watercolor just to be able to have it online. And I hope that you enjoy that too and that you've seen some of my other watercolor ones. So you pretty much know mostly how I put the paint on the paper. So I had gotten this circle stencil from Hobby Lobby, and so I wanted to use it for this first one. And actually, 
I did quite a few circles on all three of these pieces and for this one I went ahead and did the stencils and I kind of put together a a bit of a composition the way I wanted it to go and I varied the circle sizes um, just tracing them with my fine liner and then I used those as kind of a base for doodling and I just put the circles where they felt right it didn't really um, matter too much I kind of wanted them to go sort of diagonal up the page and you know place them in some areas where I thought they looked good with the paint and some of the bigger ones a little bit toward the middle I guess um, and then I kind of went to town with the mark making and you know I talk about having three different pieces that I was working on you know I've got a whole bunch of circles here too so I have a bunch of chances to, <laughs> to make a good circle so I'm just so glad that I did this and honestly I'd really like to do more of this so if you like this video um, and you enjoy this sort of longer format I definitely wouldn't mind making more of these now, the only thing I worry about is maybe having enough time for a voiceover or too much time for a voiceover, I guess, because I don't know if you all want to listen to me talking for an hour. <laughs> but we'll just we'll just see what happens and go with the flow. I also might need to change some of the focus on my camera so I'm sorry about the focus kind of going in and out when I move my hand around the shot it's been kind of picking up different things to focus on so sorry about the slight blurriness in some areas but it doesn't last for the whole video so that was a good thing anyway. But I'm kind of doing different flower petal like shapes and scalloped edges and stuff like that in the circles and I'm enjoying working with the fine liner And so I'm coloring in um, the outsides just to get some more black in there and make those petals kind of pop out more. Do many of you doodle very much? And if so, do you find it relaxing? I kind of got caught up in this once I got going and it really is kind of a Zen process. <laughs> you just kind of get lost in the coloring and you know sometimes I've tried to keep the paper looking the same um, and not sort of turning it around as I work and I did more of that in this video and that helps a lot too. You know, you don't have to keep it straight up and down. I think the only thing I was trying to do is make sure that everything stayed in the shot because <laughs> I don't want to have my paper go off screen, which I'm sure I did a couple of times. But for the most part, I think I got everything covered with the camera. And I remember sitting here and thinking to myself, well, how many different loops and scallops can I do and make it all kind of look like it goes together but also different elements in each one so I've got the shorter scallops and the longer loops of the flower shape that I made and I'm just kind of sketchily coloring it in I've noticed um, as I practice more what I gravitate more toward and I really love sketchy looks with 
slightly messy lines, not too perfect, but I also like a mixture of slightly messy lines with really um, solid hard lines with a sharp edge. And I kind of played with that in another one of the pieces. And I also wanted to note that a lot of times I'm talking about the product that I'm using or a brand or where I got it. And I like sharing that with you just in case anybody wants to know because I've gotten some comments and feedback asking um, what I was using in, in a particular video. But another thing is you don't have to use these things. You can use anything. I mean, I have sitting here, I've got those fine liners that I'm using in the video, but I also have big pens. <laughs> you don't have to get fancy and you know, some of the just most engrossing and best um, drawers and artists that I've seen, you know, they use a number two pencil. So don't let supplies stop you from doing art and use whatever you have on hand, um, whatever you have that makes color if you want color or whatever you can use to make a mark. And you can use a lot of household things and just basic office supplies to get the job done. Especially if you're just making something for you. If you're happy with how it looks, then that's really all that matters. That's kind of what I'm doing here. I mean, I like to experiment with different supplies and try new things. I always try to shop sales and stuff because, you know, it can get expensive to buy new things. And, you know, when I have a little bit of extra money, I'll pick up something. But it's a long process to just gain um, supplies that you like and really develop, you know, a preference for different things. You might try things that you really don't care for. And actually one of the things that I tried recently and it was kind of to me a bit of a waste of money is I got these watercolor markers. They were brush points and they I just picked them up at Walmart. It was kind of an impulse buy while I was there and I just really didn't care for them that much. Now maybe I didn't give them enough of a chance but they just didn't speak to me. So you'll find some things like that too. Sometimes with these fine liners, it seems like it doesn't really want to write very well on the watercolor paper. For this one here, it's working really nicely, but um, sometimes I wonder if I'm actually running out of ink or if it's just the surface that I'm writing on. So um, anybody who uses fine liners, do you ever come across that issue? where sometimes it just feels like it's dragging a little bit on the paper and you're missing marks. And that happened to me a little bit with the circles that I was tracing at the beginning of this piece. But I'd like to know your experience or if there's a fine liner that might work better. I mean, this is, you know, for the most part, wonderful. I mean, I haven't had any problems since tracing, so it might just be that the one I was using was running out of ink. So I'm going around this second circle and I kind of did a bit of a flower motif with just mixed petals and leaves. Almost like a little Zen tangle or something. <laughs> Which, have you guys ever tried Zen tangles? They seem so much fun and I guess that's a little bit what I'm doing here but not quite as in-depth you know where some people they'll cover a whole page and they look amazing there's something about the repeated pattern 
and even if you're using simple shapes and lines, just everything together in that repeated pattern within another shape is really neat to look at. And just recently I went to an art museum that had a gallery featuring local artists from the past 40 or 50 years or so and it was really something to see you know what just people in the area were making and so many local landmarks and <laughs> different things and different seasons and it was a nice experience and the the building that we were in it was this beautiful old um, it was actually it used to be a library and it had the marble columns and the stained glass and oh, it was just fabulous. The building was as much of a work of art as everything that was displayed inside. And it's, <laughs> we were talking about what a shame it is that people don't make architecture like that anymore. You go to the modern buildings and they're all so boxy and sort of utilitarian and you don't really have that beautiful, just sort of gothic architecture. Now I know it would probably be very expensive to build and maintain, and it's probably why a lot of these older buildings seem to just sort of be ignored now, but they are really something to see. kind of the same with you know old woodwork too where you have these really interesting carved you know fireplace mantles and molding and you know scroll work and everything it's just gorgeous it makes it easy to imagine you know with all the the old master painters just People just did such beautiful things and it's so nice that we still have access to a lot of those things today so that you can go see what somebody created. So I'm going into my next circle here and I'm doing the scallops but inverted so I'm changing it up a little bit but sort of keeping with the theme a bit not that I planned a theme but it just sort of <laughs> it just sort of happened that way so I have sort of the scallops coming to the inside and just continuing on working my circles just going just going slow and steady and just relaxed and enjoying the process more than anything. If you can block out about an hour of time, it really is such a relaxing process. And I decided to put some dots in the other one, so <laughs> I'll go back and forth between circles too, what the heck. Nothing is ever truly done, right? You can always add more. And I am guilty of that for sure. I always love to add a little something else. I think I've said in several videos now, it's hard to know when to stop, but I really like how all of the elements in this turned out. So I guess I stopped at the right time for this video. <laughs> for most of the stuff anyway. I didn't really um, make any marks that I can remember that I was just thinking to myself, ooh, I don't really like that because I've definitely done that a lot. <laughs> and it's just like it got down on the paper and you can't take it back. What do you do? But that's part of the fun of it, I guess. You just learn. And, you know, I've been trying to take something from each piece that I make and 
look at it when I'm done and really think about, you know, what is it about this that I don't like? And, you know, and that's all subjective. We all maybe like and don't like different things and something that I don't like, somebody else might think is wonderful and, you know, something they don't like, I might think is the most beautiful thing ever. So, you know, it's all very individual and personal what we find attractive. And I think um, next to that, there's also those sort of general, not rules so much, although I guess for lack of a better word, you could call them rules and just sort of standards of what people in general find attractive. And that would be, I think, a lot more to do with composition and maybe some color choices, but there's a lot of color choices that artists might make that you wouldn't think that you would like, but end up being really attractive once it's down on paper or canvas. But I try to think in my own, in my own doodles, paintings, collages, any of that, if there's something I don't like, I don't want to just throw it away without learning something from it or painting over it without learning something from it. And I have a growing pile of collage papers that, <laughs> that have parts that I like, but I don't like the whole piece. So I'm not going to keep the finished, um, the finished paper, but you know, I like to look at those and try to learn from it. And I think that's really helped me develop and grow. And um, it's been definitely a process, but a fun one. So I've got a lot of my larger circles done and I'm working on the smaller ones now and starting to finish up. And this actually was one of the longest ones that I did, mostly just because it was so detailed and kind of slow going. Um, but I'm starting to get in the home stretch <laughs> and I'm just sort of thinking about the other shapes that I want to do and shapes that I want to repeat in there. So I got to this circle and I don't know how many of you remember your grade school art classes or maybe you might have learned the same thing. I don't know if it was just me, but we we're learning how to make little spider webs and you make the sort of, you know, star shape with the lines crossing and then you kind of loop the spider web. And that was one of my favorite things to make when I was little. So I kind of brought that in here a little bit and then I started coloring in the little sections. Um, so it would be a little bit more like a pattern. but it brought back some memories <laughs> and we're not that far away from Halloween. So it kind of works for that too. And hopefully there isn't a whole lot of background noise in this video voiceover. Um, I actually live not too far from a highway and the noise from the traffic sometimes really carries and I can't, can't really do anything about it, but some, some days it seems louder than others when there's a lot of trucks going by. So, um, hopefully it doesn't interfere too much. So for this one, I did my loops to the outside and I realized pretty quickly that I didn't have the correct number of loops. I didn't have an, I had an odd number instead of an even number, so I couldn't do every other one. So I ended up just coloring in all of them um, with the doodle. So I had the petals kind of coming to the outside, but I left it sort of like a loose coloring so you could still see the little borders in there. And then I added the little dots there and 
looking at it now, it's almost like one of those little electron or atom, you know, diagrams from science class. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it kind of had those, I guess it would be the electrons. I'm trying to remember, but they were kind of orbiting around the atom. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't sound completely off the wall, <laughs> but that's what it reminds me of. And then my last one I filled, or my second to last one I filled with circles. And now we're in the home stretch with the last one. And I kind of made a bit of almost like a sunburst or something with just the straight lines inside the shape. And then I added a dot to where they all come together. Now I wanted something to kind of tie all these circles together a little bit, but not to take away from them. So I broke out the, the white uniball and I'm going into the background behind them and making some big, almost like leaf shapes. And I'm making them pretty, pretty large and loose, but almost like these circles are part of larger items um, and that these could almost be like flower petals coming out or something like that just but just some extra visual interest and the white um, isn't interfering too much because it's not as detailed for one and two a lot of it is also on a light background so it blends in a little bit more but there is just some extra texture there and it kind of ties all the elements together at least that's what i thought when i was putting it down and i like how it ended up turning out and i'm just kind of going around and deciding where it it looks like there might be one that I can put where it's needed or wanted, I guess. <laughs> and I was pretty happy with that. And because I'm going into the background, I'm, you know, for some of the larger ones, I'm just continuing and covering or going behind two or three or four different circles um, just to kind of bring them all together into the same shape. And I'm having a little bit of trouble with the uniball on this. It does not seem to want to write <laughs> on some of the watercolor backgrounds. And it's a shame because I actually like the pigment of it better than the jelly roll pen. Um, but it does have a hard time sometimes with the writing. Because I'll go off to the side. I usually keep a scrap paper over to the side to kind of scribble on if something happens where it doesn't want to um, write or it has, you know, it seems to lose its ink or something almost. So, uh, and, but then when I draw on my scrap paper, it's perfect. It doesn't uh, have any issues at all. So I might, it might be something to do with the texture of the watercolor that's dried on the page. Um, not really sure what to do about that. And it, sometimes it seems like it doesn't happen to other people so much, but maybe it does and I just don't see it. The whole grass is greener on the other side thing, maybe. So as I'm finishing up the doodles on this page, I'm starting to think about what I want to do on my next two. And I sat, I had sat down and I did um, both, or sorry, all three of these in, in one sitting. And so I was thinking about how I could make the other ones different and play around with some different lines. And I was happy with how this one turned out. I really liked all of the textures and everything. And 
I'm putting in just a few dots because you know I can't resist and I'm kind of continuing that theme with the dots that I have in the circles already so I'm putting in a few kind of going up diagonally through the watercolor but not a ton of them just a little bit of extra interest and then we're gonna call this one done after those dots so one of three fun projects is out of the way. <laughs> so on my second one, I took out my painter's paint pen and this one I actually got at Hobby Lobby and has a medium tip so I'm working a much thicker <laughs> than with the fine liner it's and this is a great marker too by the way it's um, pretty inexpensive I've been using it it just the the paint goes down really nicely and very opaque and you can see that here um, but I'm kind of playing around with much thicker lines and so I decided to make these dark marks and follow them with some nice thick <laughs> thick dots or circles that are solid and I thought they looked pretty nice against the sort of flowiness of the background and the feathered edges of the watercolor with the hard edges of these lines from the paint pen. So I'm just kind of thinking of where I want my shapes to go and I wanted them to be a bit curvy and organic and just kind of fun. So that's what I was aiming for here. And since I was coming off of one that I really liked, I was like, well, I'll just take a couple of chances and work on this one and just put down that thick line because I didn't have to mine too much because I had another one handy. <laughs> and that's what just made me not afraid to experiment. I had my backups. <laughs> and so I'm going around this middle curve with some more circles and I'm following the curve a little bit um, but not you know going along the whole entire line just putting it in some what I was thinking at the time strategic areas <laughs> strategic for what I'm not sure but that's how I was thinking of it and I wanted to continue with those dots because it was a little bit risky to basically cut the painting in half and have that line go from edge to edge. But I think after all of my shapes were done, it, it worked really well. And so you can see that paint marker just really does a nice job of coverage and it dries pretty quickly too. And it feels kind of like it has a nice felt tip almost. I think larger marks with black is something that I haven't really done enough of. And I don't know if it's because I'm afraid it'll take over too much. Um, so I wanted to play with that here. And I liked how it turned out. So now I have something to take with me for future projects. And that's really what the goal was here. Just to build some confidence in my mark making and have some fun. And I definitely accomplished that. And hopefully you like this too, because I really 
would like to make more of these and maybe some more with longer format, but let me know in the comments below what you would like. I mean, would you have preferred that this was broken up into more videos, maybe one video for each one, or do you like this longer format where we can kind of relax together and do a few pieces maybe? So I finished with the black and I'm going to go in with my white pen, the Uniball, and I'm going to add a little bit more contrast with some smaller dots. So I'm putting white dots in each of the black circles right in the center and add some more of that contrast. And I ended up keeping this one fairly simple and not quite as intricate, <laughs> say that, um, intricate and detailed as the first one. But I think the white looked nice and it kind of brought everything together there too. And I put a couple of little details in the thick lines as well, but not too much. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. And if you have a favorite of the three that I end up doing, um, which one you like the best and why? I really like, I really like hearing from you and getting feedback. So that's pretty much, you know, as fun as actually making the videos themselves. <laughs> I've been surprised at, you know, seeing so many comments come from all over, from the UK and Germany and other places. And so hello to all of you and thank you for watching. <laughs> it's awesome to meet people from other parts of the world. So I finished with my white. I'm going in with my gold marker and it is the same kind of brand. I, I picked it up in the same section as the black, but I really like this gold. It also has a bit of a thicker tip and it writes really nicely and dries pretty quickly too, but it's nice and sparkly. So I wanted to bring some extra sparkle into this piece and I kept on with the little circle theme too. And so I just kind of added a few little spots with about three circles in each one. And it just adds, adds a little pizzazz, don't you think? <laughs> and I think we're going to call this one done. And I'm just going to hold it up so you can see the sparkle close up. And then we are on to the third one. And for this one, I wanted to do another one, a little bit detailed and a little bit organic. So I love my leaves and I think if... <laughs> If left to my own devices, I might make every video a leaf video, and who wants that? So, um, but I wanted to make leaves, sort of leaves, and I wanted to make it nice and textured and fun using the fine liner. So I started going up and just putting in these sort of organic lines, and you can see here too, I'm not 
you know, I'm not even really worried about making them end all in the same place or any of that. Uh, they're not straight. They're overlapping. And um, I just want to almost give it um, a little bit of shading just with the overlapping lines. And so I'm just kind of going around and up and down and just letting the ink flow. And that was a lot of fun too. And it was just really nice. I was, the more lines I put down, I would kind of look at it as I was going and think, boy, I really enjoy that. So then I started getting a little bit more strategic with where I was going to make sure I was filling in some areas that looked a little bit bare. And I wanted to define my edges a little bit more. So I went a little bit more on the outside edges and I'll even do that again um, before the end of this. You can see where I'm kind of making it so it looks like it's going behind that other leaf. And this is where I'm starting to think, okay, I want to darken that edge a little bit more so you can more clearly see the separation. And so that's when I go in again and just really go dark on that edge. And I think that improved it a lot. And the camera had trouble keeping up again. <laughs> it keeps wanting to focus on my hand instead of the paper. So I don't, I, I'm thinking it might be because I am zoomed in so much, but I wanted to zoom in so that you can see more of the detail on the screen. So I'll have to figure something out, maybe focus in a different area on the table so that the blurry part would really be my hand. And so I'm just going over this last leaf with it kind of curling down. And I do apologize for the blurriness in some of the areas. I really liked the kind of sketchy look to this too. One of the things that I've always really liked is when I see different pen work um, in other drawings and works of art that I've looked at. And some people just do a wonderful job shading with ink pen. It's just incredible with those lines, and I'm sure that it takes a lot of practice to get your lines looking like that and just maybe intuitively knowing um, the right thickness of the pen that you need. So hopefully I can develop a little bit of that with some practice because I really love that look, that ink pen drawing look. I have a good friend who is... Just, she just does the most wonderful ink drawings. Um, they are so detailed and I keep telling her, I really want to buy a piece from you. Will you just make something that I can have? <laughs> she hasn't yet, but I'll still work on it someday. Someday maybe I'll get one. Um, she actually hasn't drawn in quite a while. Um, but I got to see some of her older works, and they're just beautiful. She's done, uh, one of my favorite ones was, it kind of was like an old 
I guess, what is it, a grist mill or something where you have that we the water wheel and it had um, some water coming down and it was just beautiful and she'd had so much detail and shadowing with her ink in that drawing in the water and it was just gorgeous. So someday with enough practice, but I think that's what kind of helps with a lot of this too, is practicing with those basic shapes, doing the repeat lines. You know, you, you start where you start, you start simple and then you can keep building skill, but you have to practice and, you know, get your hand into motion practice. So maybe someday I'll get there. So I'm kind of going in with the last couple little leaves that can go on the bottom and working out where I want things to be and whether or not I want to do another one. And so I end up doing three extra little elements and going over those with my pen. And this was just so much fun. Gosh, I'm recording my voiceover and I just can't get over how many times this blurs. This has to be the, <laughs> the worst one for blurring. I am so sorry. <laughs> So I'm sitting and looking at them and I was thinking, okay, the one to the left of the center and the one to the right of the center looked way too alike. And so I added a third little leaf to the one on the left. And then I added just a little bit of white in circles to finish out the piece. And I'm just going up diagonally through the painting where some of those darker colors are from the Payne's Gray. And just going around my little leaf motif. <laughs> I do love the dots. Man, I really put those in everything, don't I? It's crazy. What can I say? I'm a dot fanatic. So I hope you really enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it. And until next time, keep creating.